Hello, my name is Julian Edgar, and I'm the author of this book, Modifying the Aerodynamics of Your Road Car. What I want to do in today's video is talk about controlling a linear actuator for active aerodynamics. And a warning though, you will need to have some knowledge of electrical and electronic systems in order to be able to do what I'm going to cover in this video. So let's have a look. Why would you want active aerodynamics in the first place? Well, it might be to open and close grill shutters to give changes in drag coefficient. It might be to alter the angle of a rear wing or even alter the angle of a rear diffuser. All of these things are advantageous if they can be changed and changed easily by the driver while you're on the move. Okay, so what criteria do we need to address to achieve those things? Well, all of these uh, devices are best if they're progressive in positioning. In other words, you can change them by a variety of angles, not just have one angle or the other angle. Secondly, these things are best uh, organized, best controlled, if you have feedback of the position of the member that you're actually moving. So you have electronic feedback of the position of the wing so that the control system knows that the change in angle has actually been achieved, for example. And as you would then expect from those things, it's best if these systems use electronic control. Okay, so they're things that we need to meet, but there's some others as well. The actuator that's going to move these aerodynamic surfaces needs to develop a fairly high force. It needs to hold its position even when the power is off. In other words, you move the device and then it stays at that position, locked of its own accord. And obviously, for people working on their own, like uh, I'm addressing here, it needs to be best if it's low in cost. Now, I think if you are not after something that has to move really fast, and for example, an air brake has to move really fast, but these other things I've been describing do not, I think a, a linear actuator is a really good way to go. Now, I've got a fairly large one sitting here on my desk. Here's, here's a big one. Notice it's got two wires. I'll come back to that in a moment. And uh, what it comprises is a brushed DC motor that's here. And then there's a lead screw in this long housing here. And as the motor turns, this end comes out. And of course, this is what can control your particular surface. Now, uh, aerodynamic surface. Now, this is a big one. You can get ones at a half quarter of the length of this one. So here's a cutaway. Here's the brushed DC motor. There's the lead screw and this nylon saddle rides on the lead screw. So as the lead screw rotates, the nylon saddle moves along the uh, housing and pushes out the shaft at the end. Here is a gear reduction system, so the motor spins quite fast, but the lead screw rotates fairly slowly. These are low in cost, uh, dropped dramatically in price over the last three or four years. A variety of lengths is available, a variety of forces is available, and they're commonly available with a 12 volt motor, which means it's really easy to control in a car. Okay, so we've got the mechanical electrical device that's going to be able to move these things, move these aerodynamic surfaces, but how do we control the linear actuator itself? Well, one of the interesting things about these linear actuators is they have limit switches built in. A switch at one end, a switch at the other end. So if you apply power to the motor and the actuator extends, when it gets to the end of its extension, it switches itself off. You don't have to worry about the motor um, stalling, you know, jammed against the, the end of the travel. When you reverse polarity, the, the uh, linear actuator retracts, and again, it switches off when it gets to the other end. So if you only need full extend, full retraction, and not the progressive changes I mentioned earlier, you can achieve these things just with a double pole, double throw switch. As simple as that, a six terminal switch and you simply wire it like this. Flick the switch one way, and the linear actuator will extend, stopping itself when it reaches the end of its extension. Flick the switch the other way, which also reverses the polarity, and the linear actuator will retract, again switching off when it reaches full retraction. So for a two position device, that's very, very simple, very cheap, very easy to achieve but it doesn't achieve that progressive change that I said you will often need when you are controlling aerodynamic surfaces. Now, the best thing I have found to control a linear actuator with a progressive uh, movement is a, a little module, a little module I discovered just only the other day. Now, it's made by, I'm not sure how you pronounce the name of the manufacturer, Pololu. If, if, that, if I have it incorrect, you'll have to apologize. 
and it's called the JRK, J, JRK 21 v3 module so it's a little module which is designed to control brushed dc motors in bi-directional control two-way control now compared with say using a, a little microcontroller board and an h bridge uh, extension board this has huge advantages it costs a bit more but it has huge advantages because it's fully programmable out the box and it has all its own software. It's not a case of writing code, it's all as programmable as a programmable engine management unit. I was stunned with how easy it was to program and how effective it actually was. So what is the advantage of this over just the double pole, double throw switch? Well, you can stop it at any position. You can control the movement by a, a pot, a potentiometer. Uh, you've also got massive control over how the linear actuator works. You've got control over its speed. You've got control over its position using a PID loop. So you can set that it will stop at certain positions as governed by the pot. You've got control over acceleration rates. So it can start and stop smoothly. Uh, there's a huge amount that you can achieve with this controller that you cannot achieve just with the double pole, double throw switch and using the internal limit switches of the actuator here. You don't even have to use those internal internal limit switches at all. And just a couple of, of screen grabs of the software that's freely available with this module. Uh, here we have the input screen and we've decided we're going to use an analog voltage input. You can also control it directly from a microcontroller. You can also, interestingly enough, control it from an RC signal, a variable pulse width signal. But here we're just selecting an analog voltage as the input, which means we can just control it with a, a pot. We've also got up here uh, indications of the target, the position we want the thing to stop at, and the feedback signal coming from the actuator. And that's something I, I haven't mentioned yet, and I should. So the actuator I showed you earlier was just two wires, power to the motor, reverse polarity, power to the motor, and the motor goes the other way. But you can also get linear actuators that have got an inbuilt pot, a position pot, which gives you a feedback signal, so a three-wire device regulated five volts to one end of the pot, ground to the other end of the pot, and then a voltage signal coming out of the pot, which is proportional to the position of the actuator. So we've got a feedback system, and this little module accepts that feedback and uses it to work out where the actuator really is. So here, we're on the input screen, we've selected the analog voltage, but, but just a few things to look at. Over here, we can set the target for both maximum extension and minimum extension, which is not full extension or full retraction. And so after we've got the actuator connected to the system, say changing wing control, by using this data here, we can set what is the maximum wing angle, what is the minimum wing angle, and do it electronically in the programming of the module, rather than trying to make mechanical linkages which set those, those extremes. So there's the, uh, the, the input screen. Here we have the PID screen, the control screen, proportional integral uh, derivative. Now, don't worry about that. If, if, if you've done any mapping of idle speed control or throttle position uh, in electronically controlled uh, cars, you, you'll see uh, PID being used all the time. This is the way that you set up the system. So as the uh, hydraulic, not hydraulic in this case, as the linear actuator reaches the preset position, uh, it gradually slows, comes to a halt on exactly the right position. And this was stunningly good in testing. This is stunningly good at reaching exactly the right position. And in fact, this is a screen grab from my test. Up here, the target was 853 units of position and the, uh, the, the, the actuator actually stopped at 1852 uh, units. It's like you could get it so accurate. And by changing the proportional coefficients, the integral coefficients, I didn't worry about doing a derivative. We were able to get really good positional accuracy to, to within tenths of a millimeter, I would suggest. So again, fully programmable, no writing of code, just putting in numbers as if you were programming engine management or something of that sort. And here we have uh, the motor control screen. You can change the pulse width modulation frequency, 20 uh, kilohertz, or I think five kilohertz was the other one. 20 kilohertz is completely inaudible uh, to people of my age. Uh, five kilohertz, you could hear the high pitched scream of the, the pulse width modulation. So I went for 20 kilohertz. But here, you can do things like, well, what's the maximum speed that the RAM's going to move at, the, the actuator, electronic actuator is going to move at. Here, I'm, I'm picking a, a maximum speed of 500, 600 means uh, full speed. 
the maximum acceleration. You can change the rate at which the RAM, uh, the, the actuator will start moving uh, so that you don't get big jerks or, or big impacts on, on your mechanical system. You can, you can set maximum current, you can just do so much. It's, it's just really quite astonishing in a cheap module to have this degree of software support. Here it is uh, set up with a potentiometer input. So here's my pot. Uh, these wires go to the feedback uh, signal coming from the uh, linear actuator. There's the motor connections to the linear actuator and here's power and ground being fed to the board. Peak uh, current, it can cope with five amps, two and a half amps continuous, which is plenty for these actuators, uh, even under load, they don't draw a lot of current. And here's the uh, USB connection to the PC. Uh, once you've programmed the module, you just disconnect the, uh, the, the, the computer, uh, as in with any programmable uh, module, and it will operate quite happily by itself. So uh, there we've got potentiometer control uh, with uh, a feedback loop. So it always gets to the right setting uh, where you can notice it change the angle of, of any of those uh, aerodynamic surfaces. Now, I was thinking about this, and in a car, um, Turning a pot is not so good if you can't actually see the surface that you're changing in angle. It'd be better to say to have a five position switch or a four position switch, you know, one setting for, for wet, one setting for dry or whatever it might be. And uh, just a, a really bad drawing, but it gives you an idea. It's pretty easy to arrange a, a multipole switch to give four or five different input voltages as was being achieved with the pot. And what we've got here is we've got a four position switch. There's the input to the little module and each of these switch positions goes to the wiper arm of another pot. And they're 10 turn pots. And so there's one, there's one, there's one, there's one. Each pot's just uh, organized across wide, across regulated five volt and ground. And by changing these pot positions, we can set what all of those presets would be. So we can actually change what the preset level would be simply by adjusting the trim pot. And then when we go click, 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 it has a different voltage on each of those positions and therefore a different wing angle or a different diffuser angle or a different grill opening, a grill shutter opening on each of those different switch positions. So it's, it's, it's the best thing I've seen for controlling a linear actuator with feedback, with precision, with a lot of software control, uh, and yet at a quite a low price. Um, by the time you add in a multi-position switch or a pot, by the time you, you buy the module, by the time you buy the linear actuator, you're probably only talking about 150 US dollars or something like that, maybe 200 if you get a weatherproof actuator. Uh, you know, you're not talking a lot of money to have really good programmable control over an aerodynamic surface, be it a wing, be it a grill, be it a diffuser. Here are my two books on aerodynamics, modifying the aerodynamics of your road car. I cover things uh, relating to why you would want uh, variable aerodynamic surfaces. Car aerodynamic testing for road and track, if you want to be able to measure aerodynamics uh, quite cheaply and quite easily. And I also have a, a major book on car electronics, which I haven't shown here. And so if some of the things I'm covering in terms of the electronics you found a bit confusing, have a good look at that book, uh, the car electronics book. It really starts from basics and goes right through. So uh, if you don't have that background, that'll be useful to you as well. Thank you.